All right, from uh, one pharmaceutical company, let's go on to another healthcare diagnostics company, Fortis Healthcare, reported a steady set of numbers in the second quarter. Revenue saw a growth of about 10%. Hospital revenue aided by improvement in the average revenue per operating bed. But margins came in flat on a year-on-year -year basis. We do have Ashutosh Raghuvanshi, who's the managing director and the CEO at Fortis Healthcare, joining in. Ashutosh, uh, thank you for joining in and uh, season's greetings to you and your team. Just uh, wanted to know about a couple of... Uh, Details for your second half. What kind of occupancies and average revenue per occupied bed are you factoring in for the second half of this year? 70% plus for both these factors? See, we have seen a very steady growth in the average realization per occupied bed over the last uh, couple, uh, about six to seven quarters. And I think that trend should continue. Uh, and that is primarily coming because of the complexity of cases is increasing and the kind of uh, patient mix and case mix we are having uh, that is resulting into that. Uh, as far as occupancy is concerned, we uh, expect it to be somewhere upwards of 70%, uh, which would be slightly higher than the H1. And uh, average revenue per occupied bed, where would it be in the second half? How much higher would it be? See, the, the growth rate of uh, uh, RPOP has been very high, and I don't think it will remain at the same magnitude, uh, but we expect at least 8 to 10% increase in that. Got it. Hi, good morning, Mr. Raghavanshi, and always good uh, to see you in. Wishing you and your team a very, very happy Diwali. Well, uh, you Hi. know, in terms of uh, your numbers, let's uh, uh, slice it a little bit more. The surgical revenue, I think that's at around 61% of sales. So give us a few more details. High in surgeries, how much do they contribute and where is that number headed? If you could give us a bit of a guidance out there. And international re uh, patient revenue as well has moved up. What's the guidance out here and where do you see this number move to? So the complexity of cases has been increasing. As I said, that you know our portfolio is such that we do tertiary, quaternary kind of care. So that kind of cases, a uh, majority of the surgical revenue comes from complex work itself. And neurosurgery is a big uh, part of our uh, portfolio. Other than that, we have a lot of orthopedic joint replacement, robotic surgeries, etc. cetera. Uh, so that trend would remain as such. Uh, uh, and as far as international business is concerned, that has grown uh, significantly but it has been slightly below our expectation. Uh, we expect to see a better growth because we are going for several measures like direct sell into different uh, international markets, et cetera. Uh, so we expect that to increase uh, marginally during this uh, half, but uh, uh, I think in the subsequent years, we should see a much better growth on the international as well. How much will it contribute as a percentage of your mix? As a percentage, you know, we have still come back only to the pre-COVID levels, which is approximately 10% of our revenue from the international. Uh, and we expect that to remain more or less in percentage terms at the same level, but in absolute terms, it would grow. Uh, the reason for that is because our uh, base uh, of domestic patients is continuously increasing at a fast pace. Okay. All right. No, uh, fair enough. Uh, a lot of hospital chains are focused on their international patient segment. So uh, we'll sort of keep coming back to you for more information. Ms. Raghunchi, good morning. Prashant here. If you can uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, the diagnostics uh, business. Uh, I think here growth perhaps is uh, lagging, you know, uh, players like uh, Dr. Lars, etc. By, uh, by, by some bit. Could you explain what was the operating environment like in terms of competition, etc., discounting? Uh, Dr. Lal, by the way, was with us, uh, I think, the week before last, and they were telling us that, you know, competition is still there, but it is not price-based anymore. That verse of discounting, etc., is behind. Uh, do you sense that as well? And for Fortis's diagnostic business, what were margins this quarter, and what's the guidance? Prashant, as you must be aware that our subsidiary, uh, Agilis Diagnostics, has uh, filed for an IPO. So I'm sorry, but I will not be able to answer any specific forward-looking questions. The general environment of diagnostic is concerned. Uh, it definitely is settling down and is becoming much better uh, than the challenges of past. Okay, so can you tell us uh, the, uh, the, uh, 
the IPO, I mean, can you talk to us a little bit about the IPO itself or no, that's off bounds for now? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, sorry, I don't think so. I would be able to speak about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, that'll be interesting. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, just your thoughts on, uh, not specific, by, um, when do you think, uh, you know, the street should look at uh, the listing or the offer? We are fine in the month of September, and uh, depending on all the clearances, we will keep you posted as it develops. Will okay. it be a fresh issue or just an offer for sale? Just wanted to understand that. Or a mix of both. It is primarily an offer for sale. Let's focus on the business then because you're not giving us too much with regard to that IPO and we'll wait by for further details on that front. Uh, but uh, tell us, uh, you know, uh, are you looking at divesting any of the non-core assets or a couple of... Uh, you know, parts or parts of your business that you're looking to divest, or are you done with that? No, see, we, as you must be aware, that we have already divested one of our facilities in uh, in Chennai. Chennai. Uh, we yes. continue to sort of review our portfolio and see the focus geographies where we have good presence, and some okay. of the facilities uh, we are in the process of evaluating whether mm. uh, they they uh, are enough. Uh, uh, they, they, they're important enough for us uh, in the larger scheme of things. And uh, okay. we would possibly be looking at one or two more areas. As well. So we can hear about them in, this, in the coming quarter, second half of the year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, and final question from Ayan then. What's the status on the open offer from IHH? Uh, We've not heard about an update out there. If you could tell us where is it at now and where, when do things get uh, resolved? So the legal uh, hearings are still legal matters are pending and the, uh, the in, in the Delhi High Court. Uh, so we expect some clarity to come from there on, uh, and uh, they, that would determine uh, the approach. As far as MTO is concerned, uh, that is an IHS matter. Uh, but what I'm aware of is that uh, as and when uh, at the earliest we can uh, get the clear necessary clearances, we will go ahead with it. You said yeah, you are looking at rationalizing one or two uh, more areas or looking at unlocking value out there or divesting those businesses. Could you give us a sense of what geographies and what uh, hospitals you're talking about? So uh, we have a cluster strategy. So the clusters we are focusing on are is Punjab, uh, NCR, uh, Western uh, around Mumbai, Kolkata and Bangalore. Uh, we are looking at uh, Chennai asset as, as a potential to the asset for divestment. All right. So after having divested uh, the Arcot Road uh, facility, you are looking at another asset uh, for divestment out there as well. Take that point. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Raghavanji, for joining in and giving us uh, a detailed outlook on your business as much as you could have given us.